This video looks at how the affine connection is related to the metric for a torsion-free manifold. It then looks at deriving some results involving the affine connection, which are involved in expressions involving differential operators. So the partial derivative of a basis vector gives a new quantity involving some or all of the basis vectors and expanded in terms of a number of Christoffel symbols. So when values are put in here, we get the Christoffel symbols. And uh, sometimes there will be one or more of these when we expand out this basis here. So the partial derivative of a basis vector gives us this object here, which may involve one or more of the basis vectors. And we will restrict ourselves to manifolds that do not have any torsion, and so the affine connection is symmetric in the last two indices, so the alpha beta here can be the change of the beta alpha. And the affine connection is basically a means of comparing vectors in two different nearby tangent spaces. While the actual results used, actual objects used to do so are called the Christoffel symbols. So the affine connection is the means by which we compare vectors at two different locations on a manifold, two nearby in the tangent spaces of the manifold at two nearby locations, and the actual objects we use to do that are the Christoffel symbols. So that's the difference between the two ideas. Right, the metric can be found using the basis vectors according to G alpha beta. This is a covariant basis. It's a covariant basis vectors, a dot product of them. All right. Now, if we take the partial derivative of this metric, which is the partial derivative of the scalar product of its basis vectors, we produce this object here. And following the rules uh, used earlier on the previous page, we end up with the connection coefficients here, the affine connections or just connection coefficients uh, here. Now, uh, factorizing out the scalar product, E delta dot E beta gives us this object here, and this one here, E alpha dot E delta, gives us this object here. So the partial derivative of the metric leads to this object here. We can produce another two of these relationships by permuting the indices, alpha, beta, and gamma, and that gives us then, going over the page, that gives us these two objects here. And that's just a permutation of alpha, beta, and gamma. All right. We then uh, add the first two of these and subtract the last. So this one here and the one on the previous page are added together, subtract the last, and we produce this object here. All right. We'll just collect a few terms here. Because we have a torsion-free manifold, we find that with these connection coefficients, we can rearrange them. So alpha gamma is the same as uh, a gamma alpha. So this connection coefficient here is the same as this one. So we'll put them together, and then what happens is that these can cancel out. That cancels out, that pair cancels out. I'm just left with these two here. All right. Next line down, here we are. All right. Notice beta gamma delta, beta gamma delta, now torsion-free manifold, these are symmetric, so they can be swapped. It's the same thing. Uh, and so we've just got twice the subject here. So we've got these two things are the same. Two terms here are the same. And we get this expression here. Next step over. So a little bit further manipulation leads to the affine connection expressed in terms of the partial derivatives of the metric function. So here's the result from the previous page. There it is. Now divide through by 2. Now, to remove the metric here, g alpha beta, multiply by the inverse, so covariant here, alpha delta, over here, contravariant here, alpha delta up here, multiply the two together, they give us the identity matrix, so that gives us one. Over here we're left with a half times g alpha delta, and so this bit here, the identity matrix one, leaves us with the affine connection here, the metric connection, talk about at the moment, is a half times this inverse metric times all of this object here. So that's our first interesting relationship. Now for a manifold with no, ten, no torsion, the affine connection and the metric connection are the same thing. Also the gamma delta beta gamma uh, is known as the Christoffel symbol of the second kind. One index raised makes it the Christoffel symbol of the second kind. Go over. We can use the metric to lower the upper index on the affine metric connection, and a second relationship is produced, and that gives us a Christoffel symbol of first kind, and that's where all three indices are down in the covariant.
covariant position and the lower position. Do that with this metric here. Metric here, lowers that index, and get this object here. So that's our second relationship. Now from an earlier video we found on the variation of the metric that we had delta G is this object here. This can also be expressed in terms of partial derivatives where we can replace the variance with the partial derivative operator. Same results produced. Uh, if you have a look at that video there you'll see why. It just involves matrices and so on. Uh, but I won't get into that here. So having replaced the variance with the partial derivative operator. There we go. So we get this object here. Now, we already have a relationship with the final bit on the end here, and that's just this object here, which we found earlier on. Alright, multiply through by the inverse metric. I see some things happen here, and here, and multiply through. Kronika delta applies here. G alpha beta contravariant times G delta beta covariant. Now, the betas sum out, and we're left with alpha, alpha delta, sorry. So delta, alpha, delta. Oh, the chronic delta applies here, and delta is equal to alpha. Right. And over here too, this one here, chronic delta beta delta, beta and half index delta lower. Now, coming back here, when the when delta down below is equal to alpha, then we uh, end up with well, alpha is equal to delta, the alpha becomes delta here, gamma. And over here, when the um, delta is equal to uh, beta is equal to delta, we get over here delta. These two objects are identical, so we get two lots of them. So this gives us a relationship that the Christofferson in the second kind can be expressed in terms of half times the inverse of the metric determinant. G is the determinant of the metric. Right, remember I didn't mention that earlier, but G here is the determinant of the metric G alpha beta, and G inverse here is just one over the determinant times the partial derivative of the expected gamma of the metric determinant. So just remember that's the determinant of the metric. Next line down. This yields, we can also rewrite this as gamma delta delta gamma is a half times g, uh, 1 on g times delta d, sorry, gamma, the partial derivative of the metric determinant with respect to gamma, is a half times this object here. If you just remember the derivative of a log function is the argument of the derivative of the argument of the function divided by the original function. So the argument is the metric determinant g and divided by the metric determinant. Now we can go a little bit step further, we can take the half here using the log laws and bring the argument of the log function uh, raised to the power of a half, or the square root of it. Okay, and we can go just one step a little bit further. Um, the derivative of this is just the derivative of the argument of the log function here divided by the original function. So here we go. So there's our relationship here, gamma, delta, delta, gamma, is this object here. And that'll be useful in some uh, upcoming relationships. Now for some scalar function phi, we have del phi is expanding out as a vector basis, vector basis in the alpha. All right, now, the covariant derivative of a scalar function is the same as the partial derivative of a scalar function because the scalar function has no vector basis part. It simply has a component part, and so only the partial derivative applies at the beginning. There's no basis vectors to differentiate. So the covariant derivative of a scalar is the same as the partial derivative of a scalar. For some vector v, its divergence can be found by del dot v is and in component form here we go because this becomes a scalar um, is the partial derivative of the components plus then the derivative of the basis vectors to give this object here uh, times the, the uh, contravariant beta. Now the gamma here can disappear and we can put in this relationship we found on the previous page. So here we go. Um, now we can change the beta here they can be expressed in terms of alpha. So it doesn't matter what we label them. So as long as they go together, one up, one down, they sum out, it doesn't matter what we call them. They're the dummy index, so call it alpha. And then that means that we can then express this whole thing as a single derivative using the product or Leibniz rule. So the partial derivative of this object here times that will give us all of this back. So our first relationship here is one of the components 
convergence of vector here. This is object here. Okay, now, expert use the metric. We can raise an index as beta can be raised. And del alpha phi is g alpha beta, del beta phi is g alpha beta, d beta phi. And uh, as you can see here, remember that the um, covariant derivative of the scalar is just the partial derivative of the scalar. That will be useful in the upcoming result. And also we can then raise this index here raised, which gives us this object here. Uh, next one over. Uh, Laplacian, Laplacian, uh, Laplacian, depends on how you want to say it, del squared phi. Again, for that scale of phi, is this object here. Now, here. Now, let's just separate this a little bit. Brackets here. Partial derivative of the scalar function here, because that's what it is. This object here. In our original divergence, simply place this object here, del alpha phi, these components, place it in there. Now express that as a partial derivative and use the inverse metric to raise it. So we've got a partial derivative covariant place. The inverse metric to raise the uh, index alpha. We've got this object here. So our second relationship with Laplacian, Laplacian, depending on how you want to pronounce it, subject here. Alright, curl of a vector. Um, del cross is this operator cross the vector expanded out in space is formed, so V beta contravariant components and V beta covariant basis vectors gives us this object here. Now, this is a rank 2 tensor, and the components we're interested in here is using the epsilon uh, orientation tensor. Here we are, this object here, and we do that basically, it can be written as this form here. We can write in covariant form with the del operator, but it doesn't matter, it means the same thing. So scalar components here, so the partial group is applied. Permutation tensor has these properties here. Uh, an even permutation of the letters gives plus one, the odd permutation gives minus one, and two or more indices equal to zero. Alright, that's it for the relationship between the metric and the connection.